Hello, you scallywags. This is Greg Morgan, author of the historical fiction novel, Weeper. And I'm here to give you a tale of the sea. And it's a true tale. <coughs> okay, <coughs> I better not do that voice anymore. But I'm here to tell you a tale. So sit right back and hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip. Painful but true history. So this history has to do with my own family, and it's with my great great grand uncle, Captain John de Bloy, a whaling captain. Yeah, they used to kill whales. Not very good. So the ship was called the Anne Alexander, and it left New Bedford on June 1st, 1850. Captain John de Bloy's very first sailing as captain. The Anne Alexander set off for the Pacific and went around Cape Horn in around January of 1851 and headed west to what they called the offshore ground, about 2,000 to 3,000 miles off South America. So they spotted whales on August 20th and the ship dropped two of the whale boats down in the water. So one of the boats was commanded by the first mate harpooned a whale and after the whale pulled them on what they called a Nantucket sleigh ride. The whale turned, opened its jaws, and attacked and destroyed the boat. All the men had to jump off. The second boat had Captain John de Bloy in it, and they saved the other six crewmen from the smashed boat. So at this point, there were about 12 men in a single boat. Another boat was launched from the main ship, the Anne Alexander, which was quite a distance off, about six miles. The crewmen were now divided into two boats and it was decided to attack that same whale again with the smaller boat that was just launched off the Anne Alexander. The wounded whale again rushed that boat and passed within a few feet of it, but not directly attacking it. So the sailors went back to the Anne Alexander and used it to chase the whale. They caught up to it and threw another harpoon into its head and the whale swam off and seemed to disappear under the surface. At this point, it was nearly dark so de Bloy decided to stop the pursuit. Moments later, the whale reappeared, moving at a speed of little over 17 miles an hour, which is about 15 knots. He was headed directly towards the ship. The whale rammed the boat at the bow and put a hole in the hull. The boat started to sink. De Bloy ordered the crew to cut the anchors and throw the metal cables overboard. The captain then went to his cabin to get several of his instruments, like his sextant. Water started to flood in, and they put as much stuff as they could within the two small remaining boats. De Bloy was the last to leave, being forced to swim to the closest boat. And in the process of abandoning the ship, he got all his teeth knocked out. They moved away from the Anne Alexanders that sank and discovered that they only had 12 gallons of water and no food. And the boats contained about 11 men each. They were leaking and had to bail out through the night. The next day they saw the Anne Alexander was not sunk. De Bloy went aboard and cut away the masts with a hatchet. Using ropes tied around their waist, the whalers then lowered themselves over the side and cut holes through the deck to get into the food stores below. But they only were able to get five gallons of vinegar and 20 pounds of waterlogged bread. The ship became unstable, so they returned to their boats. The two boats paddled away, but luckily two days later, at around 5 p.m. on August 22nd, they were sighted and rescued by a whaling ship called the Nantucket and all men returned safely to New York via the schooner the Providence on October 12th. Just a few months after, on October 18th, 1851, the first editions of Herman Melville's great novel, Moby Dick, which was inspired by the Essex attack, which was seen in the film The Heart of the Sea, was published. Herman Melville was quoted as saying, Ye gods, what a commentator is this Anne Alexander whale. What he has to say is short and pithy and very much to the point. I wonder if my evil art has raised this monster. So lo and behold, a couple months later, the crew of the Rebecca Sims, another whaling ship, found the same whale. It was weak with infection from the two harpoons and pieces of timber from the attack embedded in its head. They caught the whale and killed the whale. So the Rebecca Sims presented Captain de Bloy with several of the teeth from the whale that took his ship. And they've been passed down through the generations. And this is one here. 
So I thought I'd start my very first episode of Painful But True History on my own painful history because whaling is wrong. And I learned that young. Due to the fact that I learned that about my ancestor, I took my $5 a week allowance and donated each week to Greenpeace to conserve the whales. Now, unfortunately, there's still one country out there that still does whaling, and that's Japan. Which leads me to next week's topic, Hiroshima. So I hope you liked today's episode, and please hit that subscribe button below. Ring the bell if you want to know whenever my next video comes out. And follow me on this journey.